Hello everyone and welcome back to The Split Decision. I'm Elias Blanco. Each week we'll look at the biggest headlines and fights throughout the past week in boxing. Listen, there's a lot of fight news this week and it was much needed because it was a very thin week of fights. So without further ado, let's get to the fight news. Now, this Saturday was supposed to be a star-making performance for WBO junior middleweight champion Tim Zhu. I mean, he was headlining the first PBC card on Amazon Prime against former world champion Keith one-time Thurman, a guy who was a well-established name in the sport of boxing. But, as we all know now, that is no longer the case. Early in the week, Thurman had to pull out of the fight due to a bicep injury. A few hours later, it was reported that top contender Sebastian Fundora will step in as the replacement. The new main event will be for the vacant WBC and Zhu's WBO junior middleweight titles. In a matter of a few hours, the main event went from a catchweight bout to a unified title fight. Now, this fight is a much more interesting fight than the original main event. I mean, both guys are ranked in the top five at 154, and it now goes from no belts being contested to two belts in the division. And stylistically, Sebastian Fundora will present more problems to Tin Zhu than Keith Thurman would have. When you talk about Sebastian Fundora, you're talking about an alien in that division. A guy who, although is 6'5 with an 80 inch reach, likes to fight on the inside and put a, a relentless amount of pressure. He is coming off his first loss though, which was by knockout, so there will be questions about how his chin will hold up. Because against a guy like Tim Zhu, you need to make sure that your toughness is on another level. Zhu is a hunter, someone that's going to put a relentless amount of pressure on you till you cave in. And on top of that, he is arguably the hardest hitter at junior middleweight. This fight changes the landscape of 154, and with more star power coming into that division, having a set of unified belts makes putting together these bigger fights that much easier. So matchroom boxing has a lot of bright up and coming stars coming out of the UK, and at junior welterweight, one fighter in particular is knocking on the door of a big opportunity. And on Saturday, he did not disappoint. Sheffield's own Dalton Smith stays undefeated, stopping former title contender Jose Cepeda in the fifth round. Smith was able to control the distance, forcing the fight to become a slow, tactical thinking man's game. But in the fifth, a well-timed body shot spelled the beginning of the end for Cepeda. Smith improves to 16-0, and a world title shot is somewhere in the near future. All right, let's look at some other fight results from this past week. On St. Patrick's Day, Dillian White stopped his opponent in three rounds. Listen, the heavyweight division is a lot more interesting when the body snatcher is in it, so I'm glad Dillian White is back, and I'm glad he's back on a finishing path. On Friday, junior lightweight contender Albert Bell stopped Jonathan Romero in the first round. That shot that he caught Jonathan Romero with was a clean knockout, and I think he makes his case known for a future world title fight in that division. Also on Friday, Ashley Lane beat Chris Bork to win the British Bantamweight title, so congratulations to him. He is now a top British prospect in that division. And also, over in Italy, Masanori Rikishi defeated Michael Magnesi with 30 seconds left in the fight. Rikishi was down on the cards, but in the 12th round, he knocked down Magnesi three times, three times to score the come from behind win. So again, it wasn't the sexiest fight cards over the past weekend, but it was a very exciting one. All right, let's take a look at this big weekend for fights. First off, on Wednesday, over at Pro Box, Nicholas Walters makes his return to the ring against Joseph Aderno. Listen, Nicholas Walters, at age 38, is trying to make one more run for a world title after being out of the ring for over eight years. I think this is going to be an exciting matchup, and hopefully we see more of the Axeman. On Friday, over at top rank, Oscar Valdez will take on Liam Wilson in a junior lightweight bout. This is, has fight of the year written all over it. Both guys have an exciting style. Both have fought Emmanuel Navarrete, and they both are ready to bang. So I'm excited for that. Also on that card, in the co-main event, Sinisa Estrada and Yoka Valle will fight for the undisputed minimum weight title. I think this deserves to be the main event. I mean, these two girls... Both are unified champions at minimum weight, and they're fighting for the undisputed belt. So why is that not the main event? But we're still going to get it, and I'm excited for that. And also on Friday over in Atlanta, overtime boxing, Elijah Pierce is back in action. Now listen, shout out to Elijah Pierce. He shouted me out on Instagram the other day. Um, I think overtime boxing has a marquee name and face for that promotion, so I'm excited to see him back in action. 
But we're not done because there's more major fights happening this weekend. On Saturday, the same night as the PBC Amazon card, Arsene Goulamirian will take on Zerto Ramirez for the WBA Cruiserweight title. On Sunday over in Japan, the Shigeoka brothers are going to defend their strawweight titles against some formidable opponents. Now, the Shigeoka brothers are some of the most technically sound and dangerous fighters in the strawweight division. I think they're going to bring a lot of more notoriety to that lower weight class. And over in the UK on Sunday, Fabio Wardley will defend his British heavyweight title against Fraser Clark. Fabio Wardley, a heavy hitter. I think he's going to be someone to look out for in the very near future. But this is the big card over the weekend. On Saturday, the PBC's first event on Amazon Prime Video. Obviously, we talked about it. Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora for the vacant WBC and WBO junior middleweight title. I think this is going to be a banger of a matchup. It ended up being a lot more interesting than the original main event. So I think that's going to be one to look out for. In the co-main event, though, Roly Romero is going to defend his WBA junior uh, welterweight title against Isak Pitbull Cruz. Listen, both fighters have fought Javante Davis with mixed results, but both guys are very entertaining. Roly is a funny guy. He's a very popular name in boxing right now. And Isak Pitbull Cruz is a dangerous inside fighter. I think this is going to be the people's main event, and I'm very excited for it. Also on that card, Erzlandi Lara will defend his WBA middleweight title against Michael Zarafa. And at age 40 years old, what Arizlandi Lara is doing is phenomenal. So I'm excited to watch him back in action. And to kick off the card, Julio Cesar Martinez will be back in action after almost a year out defending his WBC flyweight title against Angelino Cordova. Now listen, it's a new era in the PBC. We're on Amazon Prime, and I'm looking forward to this stacked fight card. It has been eight months since we last saw Terrence Bud Crawford in the boxing ring. The last time, obviously, he became undisputed welterweight champion, dominating Errol Spence Jr. And after conquering one division, he is officially making the jump to another. He is now the WBO mandatory at junior middleweight. Crawford has now used his status as super champion to immediately challenge for a WBO title at any weight. Crawford's next fight will now likely be against the winner between Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora. So the move is finally official. Terrence Crawford is now going up to 154. And with that brings a fresh new set of matchups and excitement to that division. I mean, anybody in that top five would be a fun fight. Charlo, Fundora, Mendoza, Zhu, especially Tim Zhu. And what I like about this most is the fact that he kept the wheel moving. He realized that a fight with Canelo wasn't going to materialize and focused on the next best option. And with that option could possibly lead to Crawford becoming undisputed in a third weight class. To some fight announcement news now, at Junior Bantamweight, a big fight is almost a done deal. Juan Francisco Estrada versus Jesse Bam Rodriguez is being finalized for June 29th on DAZN. Rodriguez will be moving up in weight for the fight and challenge for Estrada's WBC and Ring Magazine titles at 115. This fight continues the hot streak of big fights in that lower weight division, so I'm very, very excited. A big matchup between two top heavyweight contenders is now in the works. Former heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder is finalizing a deal to fight the Big Bang, Zhile Zhang. Now, this fight is scheduled to take place on the undercard of the Arthur Better BF Dimitri Bivol undisputed title fight on June 1st. And both boxers are coming off losses to the resurging Joseph Parker, but I think to a fight between two heavy-handed guys is going to make for an exciting matchup. Another big heavyweight fight is now set. A bout between Philip Hergovich and Daniel Dubois is now being finalized. Officials are also targeting this fight for June 1st in Saudi Arabia, which is the same card as the undisputed light heavyweight title unification between Bivol and Better Biev. All right, let's go one weight class down to the newly formed bridgeweight division. Former cruiserweight champion Lawrence Okoli will move up and challenge for another world title as he takes on WBC bridgeweight champion Lucas Rosansky. Now, Okoli is coming off his first professional loss against Chris Billiam Smith, while Rosansky is making his first defense of his newly won title. This fight is set for May 24th in Poland. Last week was the first press conference ahead of Canelo Alvarez's first fight against Jaime Munguia. Now, during that press conference, he was asked about the possibility of fighting David Benavidez. So, here's what he had to say. 
Who, 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 who is he? It was said that it was 55. Yeah, but who is he? But you know, he, he brings he bring nothing to the table for me. It's just He brings just 25 pounds more in that night. I'm the one. I'm the one. So, but if one promoter who I work to, they come and say, I offer to, I offer to you 150 to 200 million, I fight tomorrow. 150 to 200 million to fight the Mexican monster. Now, I spoke about this video on one of my short videos, and I got a lot of Canelo fans in a bunch because I said he's ducking Benavidez. But let me ask you this question. Who's giving him 150 million up front? That's like Floyd Mayweather's payday against Manny Pacquiao, and even that wasn't fully guaranteed. You can call it a business move, or you can even call it leverage. But what it is, is a duck. David Benavidez brings the same thing that Jaime Munguia brings to the table, an undefeated record with no belts. But what he poses is a higher risk. So we'll just have to wait and see if that fight ever gets made. So Showtime Sports closed its doors at the end of 2023, bringing an end to the boxing programming after 45 years on air. One of the key figures behind that operation was Steven Espinoza. Now, Espinoza will stay in boxing, specifically with Al Heyman. It's reported that Espinoza is now working as a consultant for the PBC. He says that the PBC is planning 12 to 14 shows this year on Amazon Prime. And this Saturday will be the start of the Prime Video era on the PBC. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the championship round where we read about the biggest topic in the past week in boxing. And this week goes to Mr. Keith One-Time Thurman. Now, last Monday, Thurman was forced to pull out of his upcoming fight against Tim Zhu due to a bicep injury, forcing a much longer layoff for himself. It's an unfortunate situation for a boxer who was pivotal to the success of the PBC in the 2010s. But now, Thurman's career is most commonly associated with one word, inactivity. It wasn't always the case for Thurman. I mean, from 2010 to 2015, he fought 15 times, eventually becoming the WBA welterweight champion. But post-2015, he only fought six times. And since his first loss to Manny Pacquiao five years ago, Thurman only fought once, and that was in 2022. And because of this inactivity, he's picked up a few major injuries along the way. He's had major elbow surgery, hand issues, and now this bicep tear. Keith Thurman is an entertaining boxer, someone you can count on to put a show on for the fans. But this philosophy of fighting once a year or two does not work the older you get. Ring activity is key to keeping fresh and avoiding those dreaded injuries. And at 35 years old, if Keith Thurman doesn't get back in the ring by the end of the year, then maybe Keith Thurman should reflect on his career and his future for the one time. Guys, that is all the time we have for fights today. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to have videos every Monday on The Sweet Science. Listen, this upcoming week is going to be big in fights, so stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Elias Blanco, and I'm out.